My last project, I used quite a bit of ash and I have some good size offcuts left over, a little too big for the burn pile. I feel guilty tossing that in there, but what to do with it? Well, it just so happens I need a really small box for a specific purpose. This is gonna be perfect. Here's the offcut I'm gonna be working with. I can't stand these uh, cathedrals, ugliest thing I've ever seen in my life, stuff of nightmares. This, I love. Oh, look at that. Beautiful straight grain, fantastic. This is gonna be the sides of our box, and um, we're gonna do a four corner match, so this will wrap all the way around. It's gonna make for a really sweet looking box. Now the first thing I did was I swapped out my general purpose blade with a thin curved blade. Because we're doing a continuous grain match, the less material we'll remove between our slices, the smaller our kerf, the uh, tighter our grain match will be. Like I mentioned, this is gonna be a small box. Small box means thin sides. If we go too thick, it's gonna look clunky. So I'm going for quarter of an inch. Um, I have my thin rip guide, I have a spacer. Let me set this up. Now when setting up the thin rip jig, I like to lower the blade. That way the spacer makes contact with more than just the front teeth. That way it doesn't pivot when you're setting it up. So there it goes against the blade. I just put the bearing against the spacer tighten it a little bit, remove my spacer, push this back, then tighten it down all the way. Here are the two pieces I ripped off of this board. I trimmed them because I didn't need the full length and it's really important that we keep them in the same order that we ripped them off the board. Now this order is crucial for a four corner match. We're gonna have a short side, long side, long side, short side. Uh, we labeled it with letters so we don't get confused. Now we're ready to cross cut them to length. So after cross cutting, we have four pieces, short side, long side, long side, short side. And one thing I should have pointed out earlier, the outside of these pieces, those are actually gonna be the inside of the box. So gotta keep track of that. So I put little M's on the sides where the miters are gonna go because the last thing I would wanna do is miter the outside. That would really suck. Now for pieces this thin, quarter of an inch, I prefer to use a shooting board. I have this guy really dialed in beautifully. It goes really fast and it's uh, very controlled and quieter. As I finish up the miter, I'm gonna check my work after every few strokes, because I wanna make sure we don't have any flat like we do right there. That's no good. We wanna make sure that this plane and this plane come to a single point. So about 10 minutes and a lot of little shavings later, we have our four mitered corners. I'm gonna go inside, get some dinner, play with the kids and get some sleep. Um, tomorrow we'll do uh, rabbits, dividers, a top, a bottom, a lot of stuff. See you then. All right, the first thing I did today was I swapped out my blade. I put in my ripping blade because it has a flat grind on the teeth. If I kept my general purpose blade on there, the teeth alternate so I would have uh, imperfections on the bottom of the rabbits and don't want that because then I'd have to go back with a router plane to clean it up. This way I avoid all that. Now I do need to rip these to their final width and when that's done, I'll knock out the rabbits. All right, with that, we have our bottom and top rabbits done. One thing we're gonna do, it's a really cool technique I learned in a Matt Kenny box making class. We're gonna extend this rear rabbit down and we're gonna notch the rear of the sides. This way we could put a lid on top and it could flip back and stay propped open. It's a really cool technique, let's get to it. The rabbit on the rear side of the box is widened to 3 8 of an inch. At the router table, I set up a stop block to make a notch that is 3 eighths of an inch wide by 3 eighths of an inch deep.
And then I just square up the rounded corners with a chisel. All right, with those rabbits and notches out of the way, I can now concentrate on the top and the bottom. For the bottom, I'm gonna do uh, more ash. And for the top, I have some figured walnut. I think it might look nice, a little bit of contrast. We'll see how that looks. Now I have some ash off cuts that I wanna use up for the bottom. They're a touch too narrow, so I'm gonna have to glue two of them together. I played around with them for a bit and found an orientation that will hide the glue line really well. And to get a perfect glue line, I'll take the two pieces, put them back to back put them in my vise and hit them with my edge plane. All right, while that is setting up in the clamps, we can work on the walnut top. And for the top, I have a piece of figured walnut that's been sitting around forever. I milled it down to a quarter of an inch thick, and when the box is assembled, I'll cut it down to its final length and width. For our last major operation of the box build, I'm at the router table. I have to put some dados in the front and rear panels of the box to house dividers. The rear panel's easy because the dado goes all the way through. The front panel, a little bit trickier because they're gonna be stop dados. Flipping the board instead of moving the fence ensures symmetrical spacing of both dados. And with our stop dados, one side can be run in conjunction with just a stop lock. Since I don't want to move the fence, we'll create the other stop dado by carefully lowering the piece onto the bit and pushing it through. I did a quick dry fit, took some measurements, and cut the pieces for our two dividers, our top, and our bottom. Okay, a couple little details as we wrap things up. I want to attach this leather, leather, to the bottom of the box. So I'll cut it a little oversized, glue it on, and then trim it to size. Uh, much easier to do now than when the box is assembled. Don't have to try and measure the interior of a box. And uh, I don't have to worry about the corners peeling up over time. They'll be locked into place underneath those rabbits. Let's glue this little guy up. I got my tape ready. This is 3M233+. plus. I prefer the green tape over the blue tape because it stretches more. So as you apply it, when you let go, when the tape stretches back, it pulls the joint closer together. And of course, double check to make sure your parts are in the correct order. You only get one shot at this. Oh, one last thing. When gluing up a miter box, I like to work against the joint or fence because I know it's dead square. I could uh, push the parts right up against it, tape them up, glue them, and I know the box is gonna be nice and level on the bottom.
With the sides glued up, now I'll just glue in these two little dividers and the bottom. So after the glue dried, I applied three coats of Osmo Pollux White. I like using that because it prevents the ash from getting too yellow. And for the top of the box, I sanded it all the way up to a thousand and I applied three coats of Osmo Top Oil. Brought it up to a really nice high sheen. And I really like the contrast between not only the two different species of woods, but between the two levels of gloss. Now, why build a box this small? Well, I think the main reason is, I think it can make you a better woodworker by working on something on such a small scale. It forces you to be precise. If you have a 64th of an inch gap on a large piece of furniture, you'll probably get away with it. But on something this small that people are gonna pick up and check out, it's really gonna stand out. And reason number two, it's cheap. If you mess up, whatever. It's a few dollars of scrap that you're probably just gonna burn anyway. Reason number three, it's fast. You start it in the morning, by the end of the day or the next day, you have a finished project. Unless you film it, then it takes six months. And reason number four, how cute is this thing? So why did I make this box? Well, after about 20 years, I've fallen back in love with playing the guitar and I'm never gonna be the next Jimi Hendrix or Stevie Ray Vaughan if I didn't make my very own handcrafted guitar pick box. Anyway, let's rock. had one lesson.